But it's not that serious, man. It's just not. Right. Well, I mean, the reason I ask is because I'm not, like, usually that serious about it, but no, that's, I like, from this. one thing that kind of will set me apart when I'm talking to girls and they yeah. like that. The I depth. Noticed. Yeah. Good. And Have the depth. Knowledge. But when I heard you say that the other day, it kind of struck a chord because I'm like, I don't want to say I relied on it too much before here, but I, I, you know, I didn't have all the techniques in place, mm -hmm. and I still don't. But like, you, you need to, you need to. There's so many different levels of pickup, okay, and and one of the highest levels of pickup, where you just you just cream cream everybody under you just, is you genuinely express who you are. Right. Simple. Now, knowing how to do that in a way that's not creepy, in a way that's attractive, in a way that um, expresses things that create a sense of mystery about you, power. Oh, I know. That's exactly what I was telling you yesterday. It's like all these routines and everything, it's very, you have to learn these things because they allow you to interact with a woman and see what works and what doesn't work and at some point your personality shines through. Right. And then you put the routines behind you and you interact. And as you're interacting, something comes up, she touches you, and boom, you know, it's like a computer program. Then you look at it and you go, hands off, baby, this shit for free. Right. right? And that, that's the sound bite from the game. And she'll laugh, ah, and then you move on to your interaction. And then she says something, you say, okay, see, your, your friend's hitting on me, you tell her, first of all, I'm gay. <laughs> Did you hear me say I'm gay yesterday a few times? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and one of the things this girl told me, um, it was actually a day before you, it was before you came. She's like, I never know if you're serious or not. I said, me neither. <laughs> she goes, I don't. Like, How do I know? Okay. We put extra pressure on ourselves. Okay, I want you to think about that for a second. In anything we do, there's this weird pressure, there's this weird um, expectation that we have that if it's not, um, if it's not, analyzed correctly, the expectation ends up harming us because there is a way, you, and you should, have a, a, an idea, an intention. Okay, I'm headed here. This is what I'm doing. Got it. Boom. There it is. That's the goal. Then in the process of getting there, expectations start to come on us. I'll give you an example, okay? The guy learns how to fight and he's got an expectation. He wants to be the best fighter. Great. In the beginning, he's no good. In the beginning, he's no good. Come on in. A few chairs around, brother. What's up? In the beginning, the guy's no good, so he's open to learning and he's receptive, right? And a lot of times, in let's say the, the art that I do in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, he'll get his ass kicked by everybody in the class. So he shows up and, and you see him get frustrated, right? He's like, ah, oh, fuck. And after a while, he realizes, dude, you're going to get beat. Because why? Because there's skill in this thing. And then he kind of humbles down. He won't say, oh, fuck. He just goes, fuck it, I gotta learn this thing. And he gets really humbled when a smaller guy beats him. Like, what the fuck? How did that dude beat me? There's something to this thing. Because at first he thinks it's all luck, right? But a, a point comes where he recognizes it's skill. There's a transition in his mind. Okay. From there, he opens up. He goes, I want to learn this. And he starts asking questions. And so is this right? Do I need it? Because at first he was like, it just seems like any, and like any other aspect of life which seems like a bunch of just chancy, haphazard bullshit. It looks like everybody's walking around not knowing shit about anything. And I think that's actually true. You know, like we grew up thinking everybody, knew, but they don't know anything, right? They don't know fucking jack shit. Our teachers didn't know anything. Our fucking parents didn't know anything. Our religions didn't know anything. They didn't know fucking anything. And at some point we're like, oh, really? Damn, I know more than my parents do. Okay, that's fucked up. You know what I mean? They raised me, but I know more. That's weird. A lot of us are in that situation. or have been in that situation. So anyways, at some point, the guy starts winning. Now, although this is a positive point in a person's life, it becomes the most negative point later. Because the moment he starts winning, he has now expectations, and he doesn't want to lose anymore. So he stops learning a little bit. Watch. He gets better and better and better. He has a reputation. And what's been working, he sticks to it, and he doesn't expand anymore. Before then, he was kind of like a sponge. He would learn shit. Now he's starting to close down more and more. And the higher his reputation becomes, his expectations, the more he becomes stuck. So I've been in this game, game of pickup and seduction for about four years, four and a half years, right? In four and four and a half years, I literally came in and just whooped everybody before me, just creamed them. 
Because they're still stuck, a lot of them. Still doing the same shit, right? Our shit improves. Seductive instinct. We're gaming. I was gaming yesterday all day long. That's how it works. But we have weird expectations. There's a tightness. When you create this tightness around yourself, like, you know, I can't get rejected, or, you know, well, everybody wants to be a millionaire, I'm sure, or beyond a millionaire, right? Well, you gotta start where the fuck you are. And you gotta be okay with saying, and this is the power, this is the power, what I'm about to tell you right now. The power is, look, man, this is where I'm at. I know it. I don't need to bullshit about it, and I'm cool with it. Come back and see me in six months and see where I'm at. Guaranteed. Guaranteed I'll be in a different place, okay? And then come back in another six months. Even in a week, I don't know. But here's the truth. This is where I'm at currently, and I'm okay with it. Why? Because I'm moving forward. I got it. This is how pickup needs to be. There's an undue pressure, right? I gotta make her like me. She's talking to me, okay, so, you know, and, and you, you throw out your neg, if you know what that is, or, you, you know, we basically say, you know, uh, I'm not interested in fucking you, that's what neg means. And you throw it out, it goes wrong. Or you say, or you say something cocky to her, and in your mind it sounds good, in the book it sounded really good, and maybe you even saw someone do it, and you say, fuck, man, it didn't come out right, right? You say something like, well, are you hitting on me? And she goes, no. And she gets all fucked up, right? And you go, <laughs> and then you feel it inside, like, oh shit, right? And then you get more awkward, you go, oh fuck, right? Now your heart's like, dun, 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 dun. And you're like, you're gonna keep it cool? But guess what? On a subtle level, she picked up something changed in you, right? So now she becomes more of a bitch suddenly. It's in, why? It's in her DNA, man. It's in her fucking DNA. She can't even help it. You just triggered in her, there's a weak man. So she's like, you know what? And then now she's, now she's gonna educate you. You know what? You shouldn't come, you shouldn't talk to people whatever the fuck they say, right? Starts so rolling her head telling you how you should be. And now you're like, oh man, this is going wrong, like wait, this is a right? So now you're gonna make up for it and you're like, I'm gonna come up with another fucking cocky move and this is gonna, this is gonna handle it. And you go, you're not my type anyway. She goes, excuse me? Next thing you know, getting kicked out of a fucking restaurant, like, like I did a long time ago, right? And you go, Fuck. And you walk out, and you're like this tall, you know, <laughs> and you want to cry, and you, but you can't show it. You can't show it. Why? Because you got your, your friends around you. So the only solution to, is to be like, fuck her, you stupid bitch. She's so ugly, blah, 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 blah. But deep inside, right, we, we just turn into a little fucking tiny little shrimp. And we know it. And everyone knows it, but everyone's going to deny it. And that's where we get weaker. And then there's another solution. Because power and freedom are the two things that I dedicate my life to. And I still do. That's it. Everything that comes in my life, that's what I look at. If it brings more freedom to me and my people, whoever that is, whoever that is, my people doesn't mean the Persian race. It means whoever is my people at the time. I accept it. If it brings more power to us, I accept it. If it takes freedom away from me, I don't want it. I don't give a fuck what it is. If it takes freedom away from me, I don't want it. If it takes power away from me, I don't want it. Okay, that's just my own, my own values, you could say, right? So the people that, that study with me, the people that uh, enjoy these teachings, they have normally these two values in their mind, power and freedom, okay? But anyways, so there's another way. How, is the, how can we uh, have more power? How can we have more freedom? Well, here's how it goes. You're talking to her, and instead of doing whatever, you, you start, come on, brother, um, you start talking to her, and uh, instead of trying to um, deny this feeling that's here, you just relax and you call attention to it. And you say something like, you know, uh, let, me, let me just say something. Honestly, I had this whole thing planned out in my head, <laughs> what I was going to say to you, and I'm like complete blank. Have you ever blanked out when you were going to talk to somebody? And this is weird because it's not, I mean, you're, you're definitely, you're very pretty, you know that, right? Of course. And beauty's common. There's a lot of beautiful people. But there's this other thing, you like, hi. Now that's cute, what I just did. That's a cute movie scene. It's cute for a girl. And it's allowing me, what? To say, hey, this is, What am I trying not to do to overcome it? Because that's, that's where the crash happens. That's where the crash happens, right? Because we have this expectation in any social 
this uh, area, which is I, I can't lose, I can't be weak. Listen, everyone's got insecurities, everyone loses, everyone's got weaknesses, and I know it. Okay? The strength comes in knowing that shit first. Knowing that. Knowing that the person who's facing you, let's say in a martial arts situation or fight, the person that's facing you, they don't want to lose. I don't care. I was just watching some stupid fucking uh, MMA thing on TV last uh, yesterday, right? I had like 30 minutes at home. I was like, okay, fine. And they're interviewing him. And the guy's like, I have no fear when I'm in the cage. It's like, okay, well, in my head, I was like, you're fucking crazy. Okay? That dude is not coming over and meeting my family. There's an issue with that guy. I've, I've been in the fight, I've been in the cage, I know. This is scary as fuck. Some dude's gonna punch your fucking face in. Right? That's scary. If you don't, if you don't have the, the, the genetics to trigger fear, there's something wrong with you. What the fuck? You can't go to the edge and be like, I have no fear of heights. You know? Okay, cool. You're probably not gonna last very long in this lifetime. So it's not that. It's the guy who goes in the cage and says, Whew. and you go, aren't you scared? He says, I'm gonna piss my pants. You know who does that? George St. Pierre. Okay? Listen to him, his interviews. He says, he goes, I'm scared as shit. He says, I'm so scared. And then he goes, but when I get in there, I do my job. He says, and I'm very good at what I do. Now, this is the spirit. Because it's the same thing I told him last night. I said, look, bro, when I'm about to go talk to the girl, I feel it. God. It's not like I'm just like, oh, I'm so immune to fucking beautiful women. Bullshit. I get them, I get their shit, I understand it, but I feel it. Even though I feel it, I still do go it. That's where, that's where the admiration should come in. In that everybody has the same goddamn problem, yet some people can overcome it somehow. Still manage to make it happen somehow. So it's more powerful and it's more freeing when you acknowledge where you are. It is what it is, right? So how would like an 18-year-old guy compete with, I'm a 36-year-old man, how could an 18-year-old guy compete with a 36-year-old man if he's going after a girl? Same girl, two guys. If you've lived 36 years, you have a lot more resources and, and uh, money than an 18-year-old, most likely, unless he had like a rich family or something. This is the average guy, right? He can't act, he can't walk around and be like, look, I got my bling bling and I'm this and that because it's going to sound fake. What he should say to her is, look, 